Welcome back to the Great Sea for the side questing session of death. Uh, the Pokemon video that I'm working on spans over several days, so instead, you're getting Wind Waker today. So, as I said at the end of the last video, the one thing left on this island was to talk to the Mad Fish, so I'm going to be taking care of that right now. And then, I'll be moving on to the next island, which we've already been to, by the way. So, what's this one going to say? Oh, he's talking about the auctions on uh, Windfall Island. There are four auctions in all. I don't remember if I've mentioned that. Uh, two treasure charts, one piece of heart, and a measly joy pendant. Now, since I've got them all, this, ad this advice is absolutely and entirely pointless. But hey, that's the Matt Fish for you. He always seems to be late to the party or seems to repeat the same things over and over again. So, yeah, not very useful character overall. Square C6. Remember uh, when we w first went uh, through uh, Fire Mountain because that's what this island is? And I told you that there was a big Octo that you couldn't defeat yet because uh, you didn't have the boomerang back then? Well, now we do have the boomerang, so let's beat up some more big Octos. And to be quite honest with you, it feels like I've been fighting a lot of big Octos so far on this side questing session, even though. There are only six in all. Well, I say only six. Six is still a lot, but it feels like I've fought more than that. And by my count, this is the fifth. So that means that there's still one left. Um, I believe... No, I'm not even going to venture a guess onto which island this is, because I know in which general area it is, but... Uh, we're, we're gonna get to that when we get there. So, uh, here we go. It's already dead, then. It went a bit better than the last one due to it having uh, only 8 eyes and our reward for it is going to be 100 rupees since as I said before that's what 8 eyed uh, big octos give us and I love how that boomerang is just floating there in midair right at the spot where the last eye was so let's just dig up this uh, orange rupee and be on our way and there's something that I might not have made clear uh, when it comes to retrieving treasure, is that when you're not at the right spot, you know it eventually because you're going to see the boat shake a little. When you see that, that's your cue to uh, move a little because you're not at the right spot. So here we go! Another orange rupee! Square C7! Star Belt Archipelago! This reeks of filler island. This is just an outcropping of rocks that do nothing at all, there are just a few cargo rocks on there, nothing special, and yeah, you can tell that this was pretty much uh, designed as padding at the, at the last second because they were still missing a few ideas for islands, same for five star isles and seven star isles, and you know what? I, I, I'm bashing the hell out of these useless islands, but they probably have some fans. Oh, he's talking about the ghost ship when the left half of the moon is missing. It's right here in this area. So yeah, as I was about to say, uh, on my Pokemon playthrough, I was surprised to find a very high concentration of um, Vanillux and Garbodor fans, two Pokemon that I consider to be last-minute filler. Uh, just so that we're clear, you are allowed to like them. It's just that I'm really, really surprised that so many people actually do. Uh, which I didn't expect because usually when uh, a Pokemon is cited as a reason be, uh, for Gen 5 Pokemon sucking, it's usually Garbodor and Vanillux. But, as I said before, you're entitled to your opinion, you're allowed to like them. It's just that I was surprised that so many people did. Now, Square B7! This is probably, to be perfectly honest with you, this is probably going to be the highlight of this whole side questing session. The reason is, this, hi this island is home to um, possibly the hardest minigame in the game. So, uh, no, no, not possibly. It is the hardest minigame in the game. Well, the battleship game is down to luck, but ultimately, it can be done fairly easily. This one, though, it's a test of skill. And... Well, I'm not that skilled at this minigame, and, um, hmm, talking about some, uh, rocks on uh, Dragon Roost Island, we're gonna take care, uh, of these rocks because uh, it hints at, some, at something that's hidden on this island. This is the next island, so we're gonna be checking that out soon. So here it is, 
flight control platform. Now, let's just get out of here. For this minigame, we're going to need the Wind Waker, and we're going to need the Deku Leaf. We're also going to need the wind to blow to the northwest. That is an absolute must. Also an absolute must is the double magic meter. You will never come close to succeeding without the double magic meter. And even there, having the double magic meter doesn't mean instant success, as you're going to see very soon. So there are a few Ritos on this island that are going to talk about the minigame. And one thing that I've read about these Ritos is that, and I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I read that these people aren't actually Ritos. They are Rito cosplayers. So yeah, this is sort of a flying contest using the Deku Leaf. You have to catch updrafts in order to keep your altitude high, in order not to fall in the water. And uh, the record is, I believe, around 256 yards, which uh, lends a bit of credibility to the idea of these guys being cosplayers, because real Ritos can, can fly far longer than that, of course. So, it only costs 10 rupees. I remembered it costing 20, but hey! Not complaining, especially since I'm probably going to be burning through quite a few of these rupees, so paying only half of the price that I expected. It's definitely going to be pretty good. So here it is, attempt number one. The contest is afoot. You see the banner far off in the distance? That marks the record distance by our, set by our great and talented champion. You must pass that banner. So here we go. There are five updrafts on the way. There's this one right here that you're better off ignoring because it doesn't propel you very far up. Instead, you want to try and go for that second updraft. It's gonna, uh, come back, come back, come back. Okay, here we go. I don't know if I've lost enough time to screw me over because that that's another thing. As I said before, you're on a timer, which is a, your magic meter. So it's going to be a extremely difficult. You have to uh, line yourself up perfectly while still catching up drafts, which is mostly down to luck. I caught this one, and I'm still very high up. I think I might do it! It's gonna be very close! Am I gonna be able to make it? Jump slash! Did I make it? It's very close! Goal! Yes! Yes! Goal! Yes! Oh my god, I cannot believe it! I did it on the first try! 258 yards! And I said before that this was going to be the highlight of the uh, of this side questing session. Well, it was, but not for the reason I was expecting. I was expecting you to get a kick out of me raging over and over as I failed miserably at this minigame. And I get it on the first try. Oh my god. So, we're going to accept a great and talented prize. I don't know why I find it funny that he says great and talented for absolutely everything, including a piece of heart, which, by the way, completes our 11th heart container. So I'll see you on the next island. Back to square C6, Dragon Roost Island. You see this boulder here next to the shrine for Zephos and Cyclos? You want to blow it up! Simple as that! Now, uh, this is entirely optional. This doesn't give, uh, give us a piece of heart or a treasure chart. It's just money. Nonetheless, I'm going to show this to you because uh, the reward, well, it's money and it's a decent way to grind for money early on in the game. So, um... What you want to do, you want to go through this door first, and you're going to enter a sort of a battle mini dungeon. You can see that there are a lot of paths branching off of this room, so just choose the door that you want to go in. Now the mechanics for this particular uh, mini dungeon are pretty weird in that it's sort of a mindfuck, in that you always end up in the same room, except that, uh, you know, uh, you, the, the enemies you, you fight depend on the door you went through. So, um, I'm not sure I can explain it very well verbally, but uh, hopefully you can watch me and uh, understand how it works if you've never played this game or never been in this place to begin with. So, um, yeah, we got a few, um, rupees here in those pots, so now that torch is lit, that means that uh, we don't need to go through this door anymore, because it leads back to the room where we're in, sort of. 
because we're always in the same room. Anyway, um, got some keys in this one. So, just kill those suckers, and, uh, yeah, someone suggested that I should have, um, used the boomerang uh, in uh, a, a few videos ago when I was swarmed by a hundred keys. Doesn't work that well when you got keys hitting you and breaking your aim uh, every single time. So this is why I use the sword, to be honest. So uh, moving on to another room that we haven't done. Uh, we got some... Oh, great. We got some of these suckers. Great. So this means we're going to be bathing in Bellas once more. Um, uh, are they both dead? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, they are! Alright, so it didn't go half as bad as I expected. So there's only one room left. It's not this one. It's not this one. This means it's, uh, this one. Uh, I think there are Boko Blends in there because uh, you're meeting all of the easy enemies in this one. There's, there are going to be a few other of these things where you're going to be facing uh, much tougher enemies like Moblins and Dark Nuts and stuff. Um, but we haven't seen uh, Dark Nuts yet, so uh, if you've never played this game, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You know, let's just uh, rob those uh, easy joy pendants, even though I have so many more than what I need to get the last reward for these things, which we're going to take care of probably in the next video. And here we go! We now have defeated all the battles, so this door is going to open... I'm just going to grab this money, since money is the main reason for coming here, since there's literally nothing else. So, going into this treasure room, we're going to have a few pots as well as this treasure chest. First, let's open the chest, which has 50 rupees in it. Uh, and now let's break these pots. There's a yellow rupee, a bunch of greens, and in these over there we have a yellow and another bunch of greens for 40 rupees total. What you can do is that you can keep coming in and out of this place. You won't have to fight the battles anymore. And uh, the pots are going to respawn. They're always going to have 10 rupees each in them. So this is why I said that this place is a very good place uh, to grind for rupees early on. There are better opportunities that show up later. But for this early in the game, I think we can deal with that. Also, on Dragon Roost Island, you want to head up there uh, in the sort of town area, I guess you could call it, and talk to this Rito, show him your uh, golden feathers. You need 20 of them in order for this to work. And uh, yeah, he said earlier in the LP that, uh, that he wants to send a bunch of golden feathers to his girlfriend. So yes, you're going to give him 20 of those. And as a reward, you are going to get 100 rupees, which is what uh, you would have gotten if you pawned them up to Beetle instead, but you're also going to get a piece of heart uh, through the mail later on, which is the real reason why you really want to collect as many golden feathers as you can. So, that is going to be all for today, so I'll see you next time.